This is Ben from theziplineshow.com. I hope you've been enjoying our podcast so far. And I especially hope that if you listen to episode six, Published Talent, you went out and you got yourself a web host and set up a website for yourself. And hopefully that website that you set up gave you SSH access to do web management from it. Now, if you're like me, when you have to SSH into a box, generally speaking, you have to open up the terminal and then type in SSH and then your username and then you know the at symbol, oops, show.com, and then you have to type in your password after verifying the RSA fingerprint. And you're probably gonna do it wrong. Oh, I did it wrong right that time. And you have to go through all this work. And if you're doing web management, and if you're especially using SCP, which is secure copy over SSH a lot, then this can get very tiresome. So today, I'm going to show you a solution to that, namely how to generate DSA or RSA keys uh, to put up onto the server so that you can do a key exchange authentication over SSH rather than having to type in your password every time. But more than that, I'm going to show you how you can set up multiple servers on the same host on OSX so that you don't have to generate, that you can generate multiple keys for different servers and you can log on to all of them all at once. So that's what I'll be doing today. Anyway, let's exit out of that and we're going to use this nifty little program called SSH Keygen. Uh, SSH Keygen is on OSX. Um, I'm pretty sure there's something similar on Ubuntu, and I think Will is going to show you how to do Windows. So I might do an Ubuntu version of this uh, screencast as well. But we're going to do SSH keygen first here, and we're going to do this minus T option. And minus T allows you to specify the type. You have three choices, uh, DSA, RSA, or RSA1. Um, and uh, you can use whatever you want. I'm going to use DSA. I'm also going to set the minus C flag here and create a comment. So uh, keys for access to the zipline show.com, you know, by Ben on January 19th, let's say. Just something so that I can remember what I was doing when I was doing this. So one of the cool things about this SSH keygen program is that it has this interactive prompt that will allow you to specify some of the details about the key that you're generating. So for instance here you see that it's asking us where to save the key and normally you would just save it under this users benjamin ssh id dsa uh, key and if you really only have one server that you're logging to logging into this is what you want to do because this is what ssh defaults to look for is this id dsa file and uh, if you only have one server, just do that. It'll work right out of the bat. However, because I'm going to configure multiple servers, I'm going to tack on this dot the zipline show extension on the end. And as a result of doing this, SSH won't work right after the right out of the box. So I'll show you how to make it work after that. After that, it prompts you to enter a passphrase. And of course, you can enter a passphrase if you want. But the point of this is sort of to simplify your access and to securely access your server through key exchange. So I'm just going to hit return and have no password on there. But of course, if you want secure key exchange with a password, then go ahead and type a password in there. Because someone can get onto your computer and steal your private key and then they can access your server whenever you want. But if they steal your private key and you have it password protected, then they're still out of luck. So that would be the reason for putting a password on it. But hopefully you keep your laptop in a safe place. And if it does get stolen, you know to change your passwords and change your keys and all that. Anyway, so we're going to go into the .ssh folder in ls. And there you can see that uh, the id dsa that dot the zipline show has been created. Along with this id dsa the zipline show dot pub. That's the public key which needs to be uploaded to the server. So we're going to upload it up right now. And we're going to have to put it into ziplineshow.com. And we're going to have to put it into the .ssh folder. And we're going to save it as this authorized keys file. And SSH on the server side knows to look into the home directory .ssh folder authorized keys file. So that's how we're renaming this .pub file. Because I haven't gotten the key exchange configured yet, I have to put my password up and... Uh, there it goes. 
But we're still not quite ready. As you can see, I have multiple servers now, or multiple, not multiple, well, I have multiple servers with multiple keys, and I want to do a key exchange for both of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this config file in the .ssh directory. And SSH will know to look at this configure, config file to figure out what to do when it's logging into a server. Now, this is really simple. All you do is type the host, and then you're going to type in the ziplineshow.com. And that's the first thing. And then here you're going to see my Python I'm putting four spaces there instead of a tab character. And then you do this identity file, and you pass the identity file that we have id dsa dot the zipline show and that's how this configuration right here that's how ssh knows to look for this particular identity file rather than just a generic id dsa file in the server but more than that we can actually pass the user uh, feel to it as well so we don't even have to type the benjamin at the zipline show or user at host uh, we can just add user here, and then that will also get put in for us, which saves us even more typing. Uh, if you want to continue here, you can also put port, and uh, there are a bunch of other configurations that you can add in here, um, and really just ease up any sort of crazy configuration on SSH you have on your server end. You can put it all in here. And just for demonstration's sake, I'm just going to show you that identity file dot ssh id dsa dot bankfort user benjamin so now i have my multiple files on here so if everything worked properly i should just be able to do the zipline show dot com and ssh right into it boom i'm there i'm done so that's how you configure multiple servers with uh, dsa keys so have passwordless ssh enjoy Hi everybody, this is Will from theziplineshow.com. Uh, here we are at theziplineshow.com, chilling out. As you can see, you got to get the website plug in there. And today, I am following up on Ben's little introduction to using key files for SSH server logins. Um, I'm going to cover how to do some of this stuff on Windows. And interestingly enough, Windows isn't really built for this. SSH does not ship with Windows. And in fact, installing an SSH server on Windows is a little bit complicated. It can be done, but that's way outside the scope of what we're doing. So I am just going to show you how to use key files to connect to an SSH server running on you know, Linux or OS X somewhere. So not showing you how to set up a server, just how to use the key files on Windows. Now, on Windows, you need to download software to do anything with key files or SSH because nothing's built in to Windows natively. Fortunately, there's a very good software pack package called PuTTY. And uh, as you can see, it's actually like P-U-T-T-Y, so if you know some of the some stuff about the really old telephony stuff, that'll look kind of familiar. But PuTTY is a real nice... Uh, program for connecting to SSH servers and there's also a ton of different tools that the same developer puts out and we're going to be using a couple of them today. But the very first thing we need to do is get to the PuTTY download page. You can see the URL up here is not exactly the friendliest thing in the world so honestly just going to Google and Googling PuTTY is probably the best bet to find this download page. But once we're here a uh, bunch of information, files, blah, blah, blah. We want to get down to this binaries section, just a little ways down the page. And then we're looking for Windows on Intel x86. We just need two different files. One is putty.exe. Now, the nice thing about the putty programs is that they are all standalone. You don't need to actually install them if you don't want to. You can just download the executable, run it, and roll with it. No installation required. There is a Windows installer available right down here. If you are interested in doing that, we're not going to be doing it because we don't need to install the whole thing. We just need a couple files. So I'm going to download putty.exe. And then down at the bottom here, we also want this puttygen.exe. So we need both of those files downloaded. And I've already gone ahead and downloaded those simply because, you know, we don't need to spend time downloading and waiting for them to download. So, now that we're here, sitting on our happy time desktop, I am just going to double click putty.exe to run it. 
probably gonna get a little okay no warning windows might warn you saying hey do you want to download do you want to run this you download it from the internet go ahead and click yes we trust it now putty is actually a pretty simple program to use basically all you need to worry about right here is your host name or ip address for what you want to connect to as you can see ssh is already selected as the default connection type we're going to be connecting to the ziplineshow.com so that's the host name i'm just going to put in there and then there's also an option to add a username which is really handy so you don't need to type it in once you get an interactive prompt and that's just going to be under connection data over here on the left and then this auto login username and in my case it's just will now i'm going to go back to session up here and I'm actually going to give this a name. So I'm just going to call it zipline, and then I'm going to save it. So now this is saved. And if we were to go ahead and close Putty, and then reopen it, bam, it's all saved. My username is saved, and the host name is saved. And now I can just click open. And it's going to start an SSH connection to the ziplineshow.com with my username, Will. And it's going to ask me for my password. I appear to be having some network connection problems at the moment, so I won't actually be able to show you entering my password, but that's okay, because that's not what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about using key files to avoid entering your password. So just trust that I would get the prompt for my password, and then I would log in as usual. Now, if I wanted to make a key file set up so that I can avoid typing my password in the future, that's where this puttygen.exe thing comes in. So I'm just going to launch that. And now, this is actually real simple to use. You've got some parameters down here, type of key to generate. You have SSH1 RSA, SSH2 RSA, and SSH2 DSA. Basically, you only want to be talking about these SSH2, the DSA, or the RSA options. Our SSH1 is a little bit deprecated at this point. Probably shouldn't be using that. So unless your server is really old, you won't have to mess with this. You'll just want to choose RSA or DSA. Honestly, does not matter which one you choose. For the sake of consistency, I'll choose DSA because that's what Ben chose. And now I'm just going to click this Generate button. And generate some randomness, moving the mouse over the blank area. Generate, generate, generate. And there we go. So we've generated the public key. And then we've got our key fingerprint. We can do a key comment if we want, which is just like uh, generated by Will. And then here we can enter our key passphrase. Remember from Ben's section, this would just prevent someone from using this key file if they stole it. If they didn't know the password, they wouldn't be able to decrypt the key file to actually use it. But like Ben said, we don't necessarily want that, so we're just going to leave it blank. Now that everything's generated, we can go down here to save the generated key. Two options, save the public key and save the private key. Well, just like Ben showed you, we're going to want to do both. So I'm going to do save public key here. And I'm just going to save it to my desktop, and I'm just going to call it Will Public Key. You can name it whatever you want. Save it. Go to Save Private Key. It gives me a warning. Are you sure you want to save this key without a passphrase? Well, yes. I am sure I do not want a passphrase. And now I'll just call it Will Key. Save it on the desktop again. So now we can close Putty Key Generator because we've got our keys. And you can see that we've actually got two different keys. The will key that I saved, this is my private key, and then the will public key. So now what I would need to do is fire up Putty and do an SCP or something to actually move my public key over to the server just like Ben showed you. But then once we're in Putty, we're going to need to modify our session. So I'm going to click down here and click this load option and that pulls all of the data from the session. It fills up my host name field and then under connection data, it's going to have my auto username all set to go. So basically just loading a session to edit it. Now we're going to get down to this connection, SSH. And then you can see that there's this auth option. We're going to click that. And now there's this private key file for authentication option. So all we need to do is click browse. And there it is. It's already ready to go. Will key dot PPK. Select that. I'm going to go back up here to sessions and I'm going to resave it. And now if I were to do this, I can click open and it's just going to use my key to connect. 
instead of asking me for a password. So very handy, very easy to do. However, you might not necessarily be generating the keys. In the case of the zipline show, Ben is actually the server administrator and he made a key for me and I got that from him via secured email. And that right here is this id underscore dsa dot dakota dot Voorhees. That is the key Ben generated for me. So what if I just wanted to use that to connect to the zipline show dot com? Well, it's actually not that easy. If we open up Putty again, let's go into this connection SSH auth and let's try to do a private key for authentication. And now you actually would have to choose all files down here and then you could select iddsa.dakota.vorkies but wouldn't actually work. The reason is that SSH servers on Linux, Ubuntu, uh, OSX, they use a different key format than PuTTY natively takes. So I could load this, it would give me an error saying you can't connect. So what you need to actually do is use this puttygen.exe to change your Ubuntu Linux version SSH key file into something that will work with PuTTY. Fortunately, it's very easy to do. There's this option, load an existing private key file. I can just do load, go down here and select all files, ID, DSA, Dakota, Voorhees, and now it's successfully imported the foreign key. Now, to use this key with PuTTY, you need to use the save private key command to save it in PuTTY's own format. So I just go OK on that, and now I can save the private key. Yes, I am sure I do not want a passphrase. And now I can actually go will zipline save, and it will create a new key file for me, this will underscore zipline.ppk, and that I will actually be able to load into PuTTY. So using SSH key files on Windows is still pretty straightforward. Uh, PuttyGen can make the keys for you and they will work perfectly fine. If you get a key from a different source, you, will mi you might have to use puttygen.exe to convert it into something Putty can use. And then you can just go into your Putty session, load your save session, connection, SSH, auth, and then right here you just click browse, select the key, and that is it. So it's real straightforward, real easy to do. You just need to go out and get these two files before you attempt to do it or you'll be really confused. So that's how you do it on Windows. And uh, if you have any questions on this, hop over to theziplineshow.com. You can contact us there with any questions you might have, and we'd be happy to help. <laughs> <laughs>